astrophotography has changed dramatically in the past few decades. From the transition from film to digital, to modern advancements in stacking and post-processing, it's an ever-changing field. So when the good people at telescope.live reached out to me for a free trial offer to test out some of their equipment and software to image the nighttime sky, I was excited to see what the next steps were in terms of advancements in this field. In today's video, we're gonna log on to Telescope Live and go through a step-by-step -step process showing you how you can control some incredibly advanced equipment under some of the best dark skies the world has to offer to image the nighttime sky. If you enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, let me know of your experiences with astrophotography in the comment section below. Now let's get started by logging onto this website and seeing what they have to offer. All right, we are logged in now to telescope.live and the account that I have with them. And we have here the dashboard. The first thing that jumps out to me about this website in particular with what they're doing is just how clean the interface is. Astronomy and astrophotography can be quite complicated, and rightfully so, but you want to have a user experience that is good for people who are maybe newer to the hobby or quite advanced with it. So let's go over here first to one-click observations. Let's click on new observations. So for this, you're going to be able to choose an object that you'd like to observe from the list that they give you that basically is available right now. So this means they have a telescope open, it's in a part of the world that can see these objects, the skies are clear, everything's good to go. What I'm going to be choosing from this list are two objects that I cannot see where I live because of my northern latitude. These are southern sky targets that unless I move to like Australia or unless I traveled somewhere south of the equator, I just would not be able to see these. Go down through this list. We've got some here that I can see, like I, I've, I've imaged M4, um, so that's not one I'm going to personally pick for where I live or for what I'm looking to do with this. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Okay. I didn't expect this one to be on the list. This is really neat. Alpha Centauri. So I cannot see from where I live the closest star system to our solar system. It's saying that in roughly two days they'll be able to observe this one. Again, LRGB data will be collected. Let's see what they have for info here telling me the telescope that will be used. It's one of the ones in Australia. More specific information about it. I have never seen or imaged Alpha Centauri. Let's click Observe Now on this one. Expected completion date July 10th. That's just uh, two days from when I'm recording this now. So that's a very quick turnaround for that. All right, so we've got one-click observations that are set up to go. This is a little more of an automatic process. This would be probably a really good starting point depending on the plan that you have through them um, to, uh, to begin with gathering data for images and then experimenting with how to post-process it in Photoshop, PixInsight, or any, num any number of other pieces of software. But let's get into the in my opinion, the, the most impressive part of this, and that is their advanced request system and how simple it is to use for the types of telescopes that we're talking about and the data that's being collected. So I'm going to go down here to New Requests, and we've got some uh, options here. Um, do we want to look at stars, galaxies, or nebula, comet or an asteroid? solar system, the planets. There's one object that I have really, really wanted to image, but right now I don't own the equipment for it. And even though it's in my skies, it's very far to the south and it's right over top typically of a light dome from a nearby city. It's a really tough part of the sky for me to be able to image. And that is the famous Eagle Nebula. We click search coordinates there 
off the top of my head. That looks accurate for the right ascension and declination. So let's go to the next step for imaging this target. So here we have our list of the telescope banks that they have around the world. They've picked locations. They've told me that are uh, very good weather throughout the year at a very good altitude, very clear skies. These are pristine, no light pollution skies that are almost impossible to come about for, for where many of us live around the planet right now. We've got some in Australia, Spain, Chile. Ah, we also have over here the, the price in terms of credits, and that's always something to, to, to keep in mind here. I'm working with about 200 credits today, and that definitely does have a little bit of an impact on what we're looking at. But even more than that, an important thing to consider is how large is the object that you're imaging. The Eagle Nebula, for example, is around 30 to 35 arc minutes, if I remember correctly, off the top of my head. And you can do a, a Google search, go to Wikipedia, an astronomy app to, to double check that for your target. So you're going to want to pick a field of view that is probably either very similar or maybe even a little less than what your object is. It all depends on what you're going for in terms of your artistic choice and what you're doing in terms of astrophotography. So th the two biggest things I would look at from this list are, are number one, how many credits are you looking to spend and what's the price per credit? That's just a practical thing to look at. But in terms of the astrophotography portion of it, if I'm imaging something like the Eagle Nebula that's around 30 or 35 arc minutes in terms of its size, I'm going to probably want something around that. 324 arc minutes from a 10 centimeter diameter telescope, probably too wide of a field of view with what I'm looking at here. So that's going to bring it down to probably the 32 arc minute one, which is CHI 1 or CHI 2, so telescope 1 or telescope 2 for Chile. 32 arc minutes to 67 arc minutes. It's a 60 centimeter to 50 millimeter telescope. I'm going to go, I think, with the second option here for two reasons. Number one, it's going to ensure that I get the entire object in the field of view. Number two, it's also about half the credit cost of it. And there's a little bit of a quicker turnaround in terms of this telescope. If you were going with an object that was smaller, if you had more credits that you wanted to spend on it, you may want to go with the 32 arc minute option or a 19 arc minute option. Those are incredible. That's a 100 centimeter telescope they're using. That's, I will never own that. That's remarkable. Um, but for what we have here, I think this is going to be a really nice sweet spot for the Eagle Nebula. And I also like the turnaround time and the credit saving as well for it. So let's click next right here. And again, this just takes you step by step by step by step through it. I'm so impressed by how clean the website is and how, how uh, detailed it is from step to step of the process. Because this could be very, this could be a good bit more complicated than it actually is, is right now. So we've got our target chosen, our telescope chosen. It's got the specific models of it, cost, everything looking at that. Do I want to go with just astrophotography or advanced? I'm just going to stick with astrophotography here. Um, that's going to be a little more straightforward of a process. And for my experience and my comfort level, that's the observation mode that I'm going to stay in here which is going to have them do a, a little more of the choosing for me than if I went into uh, advanced mode, for example. But know that that option's there. So now we come down to the options of what do we want to image. I definitely want to image, and it's already selected for me, the luminance, red, green, and blue. It's important to know that these are telescopes that are using monochromatic sensors. 
That means that down the road, if you want to do more post-processing, you are going to have to combine different layers of information to, to bring out a full color image of it. That's a very common thing and it's what you want to get the most amount of detail out of your images. I currently, for my own setup, do not image that way. I'm just using a DSLR camera from my backyard. So this is going to be a great increase in terms of the amount of data and more importantly, quality of data that's being selected for this image. Depending on what you're imaging, you could do an H-alpha, O3, or S2 filter as well. Uh, an H-alpha would definitely, uh, it wouldn't hurt and it would definitely probably help for the Eagle Nebula, but my, my level of experience with incorporating all of these levels of data, I'm honestly just going to stick with luminance and RGB. But again, H-alpha, especially for something like the Eagle Nebula, would probably help just know the object that you're imaging and whether that's necessary or not for what you're looking at. But I'm just going to stick with this right here uh, for my own experience level just to move on. For exposure lengths, it gives some suggestions up here. It says typically between 300 seconds and 600 seconds is good. Um, it's set right here to 300 seconds, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with that. That's a five minute exposure. That's very impressive and I think very adequate. Um, for what we have here for the Eagle Nebula. And that's about two to three times what I can normally get from my own backyard with the equipment that I have uh, imaging a target like this. How many do I want of this? Well, I want more than one. Let's take that up to two and see what that does. All right, we're now up to 40 minutes of exposure time. We've got the cost broken down right here, so we're at 76 credits. Let's take this up to five. All right. So we're going to be getting an hour and 40 minute exposure of the Eagle Nebula. Now that we've got everything good and ready to go for what we want to actually capture, let's click Next and select the time and date for this observing session. Again, the theme of this website is easy to use uh, because it walks you through everything here in such a nice visual way. When I go over here for the telescope that I have chosen, we've got a night coming up in just three days that they should be able to get me in for for an observing session. So I'm gonna put this telescope to use on this night uh, by choosing the 11th. I'm going to go over here and click Next. It's telling me my total cost, the expected completion date. Are you ready to observe? I am ready to observe. And there we go. I've now set up an imaging session of the Eagle Nebula exactly as I wanted it to be with equipment that I will never be able to own under skies that I do not live under with an object that is so low to the horizon where I live, it's very, very difficult to image during any part of the year. At this point, we're gonna wait for the data to come in from our one-click observation and this advanced request that I just put in. And once that has come through, we'll come right back and we'll take a look at the information that was given from this program and then we'll see what we can do with it in post-processing. And after just a few days, all of the data that I had requested is now in from my advance request to my one-click observation. There are a couple things that I want to talk about that I forgot earlier before we get to that and uh, one of the more interesting things are the pro data sets. These are information that has been acquired by the same equipment that we had access to earlier, but they have pre-shot these targets with tremendous amount of data that you can go in and easily download to do your own post-processing. So for example, right here we have IC4592, uh, the Blue Horsehead Nebula. This is over four hours of data. It was captured by a telescope in Australia. Uh, in September of 2021 
just uh, about a month after I'm recording the second part of the video and it costs 229 credits. You simply download this and then you have the raw files to work with in Photoshop, PixInsight to make your own. Uh, this is provided at some of the different tiers that they have in terms of their subscription model. Another thing are the tutorials. Uh, I have never personally worked with combining um, narrow band, red, green, and blue images. Typically I just do a single shoot camera. So I've actually been using these to help me with this process before I share with you all uh, the final results that I have. Uh, they have planetary imaging, deep sky imaging, some really good top to bottom tutorials here to help you out. But let's go back here to first our one click observation. We'll go to my completed observations. We have some others here that I've been doing while I've been trying out this software. And we have here already a beautiful picture of Alpha Centauri uh, that I would never be able to get from my own backyard. Was observed just a day or two after I had initially requested it back in July. Was made up of luminance R, G, and B filters. And we can download this image to have the files to work with and to see that I'll share with you in just a moment. We can then go down here to advanced request, which is the most exciting thing that we had. And that is going to be the Eagle Nebula. Completed again, just a day or two after I had initially filmed the first part of this video. The telescope in Chile, and we have here all of the information in terms of how to download it, including calibration files and the details of it. So let's go ahead and get that downloaded along with the calibration files that I may use as well for that. So we're going to let these download. I'm going to go through and do some processing and then we'll come back in just a second with the final images of Alpha Centauri which was my one-click observation, and the Eagle Nebula, which was my detailed advanced request. And here we have the end results. With my one-click observation, the beautiful star system of Alpha Centauri. I've done nothing to this image. This is the exact raw file that I was able to download from the servers of Telescope Live. And even without doing any editing, it's a beautiful image to keep or to share with friends and family. And that brings us to the main event, which is the Eagle Nebula. I learned a great deal in terms of how to process this image with the data that was provided by Telescope Live. Using Deep Sky Stacker and PixInsight, I stacked and calibrated and put together the green, red, blue, and luminance layers to bring out the fine details that you see right here. The pillars of creation are something that I've always wanted to image, but I simply do not currently have the equipment or the skies to get anything close to this level of detail. For those of you interested in this service, they have a one week free trial. While you're signing up for that free trial or any time during it, Use the promo code late night for 20% off for the next 12 months. So is a remote imaging setup like telescope.live right for you? That's gonna depend on a couple of different factors. For me personally, I'm gonna always prefer first and foremost going out and observing in my own backyard and imaging with my own equipment. But there are limitations to that. Telescope.live has equipment that I will never be able to personally afford. And they have skies that I will always be envious of in terms of imaging. There are just simply some objects that I cannot physically see from where I live. And the telescope sites that they have around the world are more than able to capture those incredible targets. Depending on where you live, the equipment you own, the money you have, and your experience level, this could be a remarkable website to get you deeper into astrophotography and do some remarkable imaging with equipment and skies that you may never be able to experience personally yourself. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.